everyone, it's Lennon. And I'm sitting outside battling with myself over a dream that I had. And I wanted, I just felt called to talk about it. I don't know why. I mean, you know those traumatic dreams where you wake up and you're crying and, or maybe you're not crying, you're just shocked as shit about whatever the fuck happened in the dream. And I kind of had that today. But it wasn't like, I, I was, it was almost like I was numb to the dream, but it was so, I tend to have, I mean, not to get too graphic, but I tend to have really fucked up dreams when I'm menstruating. <laughs> like it just is what it is. Mm. Go Spidey. <laughs> uh, and I, I just like found myself grabbing my powerful my powerful tools and gathering them up at the kids on the bus and breathed through all of the numbness all the emotions um, as you can see I've got like this big ass fake rhinestone ring on it's kind of it's really too big for my hand but for some reason this obsidian thing and this rhinestone ring are like my go-to's because I tend all the ones that I wear on the daily that I never take off are my most powerful rings um there's a touch of, of, of a glamour wit of a glamour witch in me but there are some that I put on when I need that extra boost and I did I mean this morning I woke up and I had some coffee and put the kids on the bus and I sat with the dream for a minute and I didn't feel called to journal about it, which I thought was really weird. Um, I usually do journal about them, but in a more like automatic write type of a zone out if I have the time. And this morning I just thought, you know, I need to get this out of my head, but it's not a writing. It's not a writing thing. It wasn't. It was an art thing. And it felt so, so clear in my head that I had to paint it. And basically the dream was straight out of Wonderland. And I swear to God, if Wonderland existed, I would be the first one in line. <laughs> I would be the first one down chasing that fucking rabbit. Uh, and I'm sure it does. It, it, exists, it exists in my mind, I'll say that. But it was so psychedelic and so out there, like... And I think that that's why the art portion of the, of like the, that me wanting to paint it or draw it or something came along instead of the writing. I felt, I felt very like I needed to be in the, the Wonderland Alice dream like mindset. And I couldn't, I couldn't convey that on paper just with my words. So I got out the notebook that I'd like to doodle in. Uh, it doesn't have any lines in it. Not that I need lines. I don't give a fuck about lines. I'll draw on anything. Um, but I got the journal out that I doodled in and I doodled a little kind of a sketch of what was in, like the picture that was in my mind. And it looked so weird. I was like, how the fuck am I supposed to paint this? And I'm sorry, I'm cussing. I'm just, I'm like, I just wanted to share this little bit with you guys. And I'm, I'm not even really focusing on the fact that I, I do cuss like a sailor. <laughs> um, anyway, so I I painted it and I hyperlapsed the video. Now, I want to touch on like kind of what I did to get into the mindset of the dream for the purpose of the paint painting episode that I did. Um, I sat on my stool and I, I did the setup thing. Like the setup I did, like just cut like this muscle memory now, setting up the easel and setting up the paints and, and the water and because and I was using acrylics today. Um, all that is like very familiar so I just went ahead and did that I set everything up and I got a fire started in my fireplace um, it's not really fireplace weather but there was something there's something about the crackling that that sends me into like a trance like state that I needed as well so I made my little fire in the fireplace and I got that really kind of smoldering and I put on some Hildegard von Bingen which is, I mean, if you don't know, I'll leave a, like an hour long thing on here on YouTube of her, I think it's called Ecstasy. 
Chanticles of Ecstasy. Anyway, she she had compiled these chants for basically for the Divine Feminine instead of a monastic type of a chant where it's mostly, you know, Gregorian chants are mostly a male-based chant and, and they go on the male vocals. There, she, she, com, she compiles new chants for the church to be for the woman vocals, um, if that makes any sense. And so I play a lot of her when I need to get into that mindset that basically it was a ritual mindset that I was, I, I kept telling myself I had to get into, which was really weird because I'm usually not in a ritual headspace when I'm painting. Uh, I can get there, like if I zone out good enough, <laughs> but I kept telling myself I needed to ritualize this, this event, right? It felt like an event. And so I set up first and then I made the fire and I got that smoldering. I feel very, hest I have very, I have uh, much Hestia vibes when I make a fire. Uh, it feels very uh, like homemaker. Uh, it makes me feel more homemaker than I am. Uh, as sexist as that sounds. <laughs> and then I turned Hildegard on and I just painted. And I think the whole process took me about an hour, but I don't even think that I was in my, like, I don't think I was here. I think I was in this world. Even though from the vantage point of the painting, you couldn't really, I wasn't standing, I mean, I, you know, the figure that is from the vantage point, I'm not standing on anything. It's not like I'm standing on a cliff looking out into this thing. It's just blah. It just looks very surreal. It's very surrealism. <laughs> and I I did, when I set up the paintings, I set up the camera because I thought, man, I need to get this show on camera. <laughs> How, if I'm really into this, if I'm really in this mindset and I'm going to be, then I'm not going to be talking during it like I've done in the past. So... I hyperlapsed it so that I could just do whatever and do, go at my own pace and be in my own head. And I'll play that for you. I don't know if I'll play it now or later. Um, it's in hyperlapse an hour and a half lasts like what, two minutes, I think. So it's only a two minute video. And it, it's not a very detailed painting, but, uh, excuse me. But what, it, what essentially I may put the video here so that you can like follow along with what the hell I'm talking about. But looking out into this landscape, it was an it was an ocean or a sea view, and there was this cliff on the side, and this cliff looked very uh I don't know, lake country. I think you call it lake country over in England. Lake district. <laughs> the cliffs in the lake district. Um this like seaside, rugged, rugged cliff. And there was no greenery on the cliff. It just looked like a rock face. And there was these, I don't know, these weird waterfalls that seemed to bounce off all the little uh, rocks and, and crevices. And the water just seems to be pulling in places that weren't really supposed to be pulling in terms of physics, okay? <laughs> in terms of how the water would move. Um, so I found that really weird. I was like, what are the waterfalls doing? Or is that even water? Like, you know, because I often have those thoughts too. Like, this doesn't have to be water. This could be something. This could be a life form, you know, for all I know. And it's flowing down the rock because it's like a lichen, a water slash lichen entity or some shit. And so I thought, I found that to be weird. So I kind of drew that as, I mean, I kind of painted it as best I could. But the horizon line was what really got me. The bottom of this, the bottom of what I was looking at was not a horizon line like you like if you're looking at a horizon line on the sea it's going to be straight across okay it's going to be a complete horizontal line this just is what it is this one wasn't this one was like up at an angle like i was like i was submerged in the water but then i was leaned back or something it was so weird to have the horizon the horizontal the horizon line non-horizontal if that makes any sense like a 45 degree angle up like I was looking at it, I was, I was looking at it weird. I was, I was in a, a weird angle and then sitting like floating up top was a coffee cup or a teacup. Really? It was a teacup and the teacup looked to be like, um, like something you would see on your grandmother's table when she would set out tea. 
you know, three o'clock English tea or whatever. You get, a, you get a cup, you get a saucer, and it's kind of like there's some floral designs on it. There may be some silver etchings on the handles or what, whatnot, like real good, real good teacups. And it had this tea or coffee, I'm going to say coffee because I'm a coffee connoisseur, as you can see. Um, it was sloshing out, but in a very cartoon-like way, not like a real way. Again, we're defying the laws of physics here with what I'm painting. And, <laughs> and then up in the sky, where I guess where the sun would be, it didn't look like the sun. It didn't look like, I mean, when I think of weird suns, I think Teletubbies, you know, like that's that fucked up baby face or whatever. But a sun or some sort of life, a uh, light source was up there, but what it was, was a sconce. Like a sconce. Like a wall sconce. And it was emanating this orange glow outside of it, right? Like the, like the whole thing was like this frosted glass, but it was like the light bulb itself was kind of an orangey color, kind of like the ones you put on a front porch or something. Um, almost kind of like flame, flame color, but it wasn't. And it was emanating the light on the clouds, like a sun would do, like in the evening or something, like this sunset -y type of clouds where it's catching rays of orange and pinks. And so that's what was happening. And I thought, is the sconce doing this? Or is the sun setting off, off my, in my peripheral somewhere? And, I, and I'm just, the sconce is just floating there like the teacup, kind of weird. <laughs> and in the center of this whole vision that I was having, this, this very surreal vision was this figure that is on the Wheel of Fortune card. This imp, I've always called it an imp, but I asked in one of my uh, last videos when I touched on the Centennial what it is, and someone was like, oh, that's a Hermanubis. It's a mixture. It's a mixture between Hermes and Anubis, kind of like, it's probably what predates um, the Hermes Aphrodite, Hermaphrodite. It, it, it's like, I think it predates that. It's like the, in terms of occultism, it's probably the god that's the mixture of the two that was like the first Hermaphrodite. I hope that makes sense. I hope I'm even getting that right. Tell me in below if I'm, if I'm not, <laughs> please. But someone did actually comment and told me that that was a Hermanubis. <laughs> Hermanubis. Hermes Anubis. And so, of course, researcher brain here. I um, looked it up and I looked, you know, like I said, I found out some of the hermaphrodite type of things that it talked about. And I thought, wow, okay. This is, is this shining or is this my ring? Look at this, look at this, um, this is my, I'm sorry, I'm getting off topic, oh my god, this is so rambly. Um, this is my lapis, not lapis, I love a lapis lazuli, oh my god. This is my labradorite palm stone, and look at that shimmer. Oh, the shimmer right here is in the shape of like what a peacock feathers, the end of a peacock feather would look like. Oh, it's, oh. <laughs> open up so I'm not so rambly anyway so I tried to paint what I was seeing in my mind's eye it didn't really work out that well painting is my favorite my favorite hobby and I'm not I don't want to say I'm not that good okay I know that I'm better than some and I know that I'm worse than others I didn't go to art school or anything but it is something that I enjoy doing and I'm going to continue to do so everything might not be proportional or it might not look good, but I wanted to share this dream and this vision that I had because the end result, the end painting very much felt like a tea and tarot type of a type of a thing, like this cliff, this water, the, there was a, a big emphasis in the whole thing about water and then there was the clouds and then there was light and then there was tea or coffee. And then this Hermanubus figure. So it's almost felt like very 
tea and tarot something. Maybe it's something that I need to be manif manifesting for my YouTube channel. Um, maybe it's something that I need to dive in on a personal level. Like maybe this is something like a ritual that I need to devise for myself coming in the coming, you know, coming up. Like maybe I need to focus on this a little bit more. So, I mean, it was just really weird and I'll continue to sit with it, but the ritual in and of itself that it turned out to be was so profound and I was looking at this painting going oh my god what is this <laughs> so um so after I did that I just kind of did you know housework things and stuff like that and I wanted to film a little bit of what I've been going through today and I love looking at this in the camera. Uh, so I wanted to end this video, it's not going to be long, with a Bukowski poem because I've been sitting on here reading poetry thinking maybe if I get back to self before the kids get home I can't, you know, focus on them very well. <laughs> it's called The Conditions and let me preface this by saying that Bukowski has such a fucking way of making poetry about the human condition. The conditions. Presently under the conditions of the sun, my world is ending. Marked by the worm, haggled by the world population that has no reference to me. Presently under the conditions of the sun, my world is ending. My friends, that has hardly ever been a kind time. I've shown courage, drunkenness, and fear. The heart continues to work through unquestionable terror. Under the conditions of the sun, I make ready to lay down the labor, the pain, and whatever honor is left. The wind started blowing as soon as I read that. It's a fucking sign, thank you. I'm a wind witch from, from hell, from hell. I'm a wind witch. Every time I do something very magical and the wind starts whipping, I'm like, yeah, I know my magic working, my, my magic churning, my magic working. <laughs> Ooh, love you. So anyway, so that's all I wanted to share. I did want to share this very personal, very vulnerable day with you guys and let me know if, if anyone knows what this dream could mean. I, I am a very good interpreter of my own dreams, but y'all might know what a teacup means or that Hermanubis figure means in a dream. <laughs> so uh, let me know and I hope everyone's having a blessed day. Much love.